Hello guys, this is Magical Lady Duchess and tonight I'm going to be doing a video on building a better relationship with your ancestors and your god and goddesses. So here it goes. Um, I hope you guys enjoy. Please like, subscribe, share, um, comment, tell me how I'm doing. If I'm not doing, you know, or explaining it, then ask me questions. I'll do it. I'll, I, I pretty much respond to everybody. So, you know, let me know. Um, deities, we honor them. Uh, goddesses, we honor them. Um, a great many of us find ourselves short of information we seek on how to deepen our understanding and our relationships with them. So I wanted to do this video to kind of help you um, understand what you need to do to build that relationship with them. Um, you can search it online, you know, um, you can go to metaphysical stores and they have stuff everywhere, but nobody really tells you how to really build a relationship with your goddess. Um, last night I did a offering to my goddess that I go to and she is my Isis. This is Isis. I, I love her. She helps me. She helps guide me. I love her. And I have to be honest with you. In the beginning, I really didn't have a um, patron or a deity that I went to. I was more like a natural witch. And so I just kind of like did my own thing. But I don't think it's anything wrong with having um, an alliance, so to speak. Because it's a relationship that you will have for many years to come. You don't necessarily just have to have one deity, one god, or one goddess. You can have several. I have um, a patron that I use for my criminal casework when I do stuff. Um, I was talking about that in my group yesterday. Um, Jesus Malvarde. Um, and I, like I said, and I, I love Egyptian everything. And I am a daughter of Isis. I am everything that she encompasses. Um, she is the mother of compassion. I am the mother of compassion. Um, but I also dig in your shit too. Um, but back to the video. Um, using the gods as a means to an end is not only frowned upon, but more experienced pagans. Um, but the gods don't like that much either. Let me just say that they're not like an ATM. In the in the sense of you can't use them like an electronical device. Uh, research them, you plug them in, plug them out, only use them when it gratifies um, your needs. That's not the way that this works, right? Um, and if this has been your method and you're wondering why some spells have not worked out well for you and why some have and um, why some have even blown up in your face, well, you've got to build a personal relationship with your deity, um, your goddess or your god, just like you build relationships with people. You shouldn't, um, oh, okay, sorry about that. Um, you shouldn't, you should treat your relationship with your deities um, just like you would your wife or your husband. And that means you need to appreciate them, lavish on them, give them attention. Um, they don't like to be ignored with your affections. And then you come and you request something from them. Um, if you ask any pagan or any witch and they will tell you the last beings on this planet you want to tick off or disrespect um, is a god or a goddess. They are put, they are good about returning favors to you in spades. The first thing you should know is that anytime you consider asking a deity to lend their energy to the work you're wanting or are doing, whether it's a ritual or spell or another act of magic, prayer or anything else it's really wise to have a solid idea of who you're asking and why take some time do your homework cross-reference everything um on the web books whatever you know find the deity you'd like to know better study his or her history how ancient people worship them what types of offerings appease them gathering ideas on erecting an altar or a shrine on them and so on and so forth Secondly, keep in mind that your relationship with your deity is just that. It's a relationship. And just like any other relationship you've had in your life, it takes time to build. 
Just as your relationship with your friends probably aren't all exactly the same, your relationships with the deities, gods, lowers um, may not be the, exactly the same either. Like anyone else, each deity has his or her own personality, his own likes and dislikes. It's important to note that not all relationships with a deity will last for years or your lifetime. We all have had friends or relationships that's really important to us, but only at a particular point in our life. Which reminds me, um, let me say this. In the beginning, um, I didn't really have a deity. But I um, this was gifted to me by one of my really, 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 really good friends, and I will forever be thankful to him. Um, I used to represent the goddess because a lot of people don't have a lot of money when they first start off. You know, they building. Um, I represented the goddess with perfume, with pearls, um, a glass of red wine. That's what I would do for the goddess. And then I was gifted this. And so um, this is like, okay, I just want to add that. Before I chose one. I just said the goddess. So they encompassed, encompassed all. Um, so back to this. Um, everybody that enters our life for a reason, sometimes uh, the same thing happens with the deity. Someone looking to build a romantic relationship may spend a lot of time with one of the many goddesses associated with love, like Venus. Venus is associated with love. And then thank them and back off. And then they find the relationship they wanted and they build a new life together. It's important to always thank the deity who came to your aid, but we will get to that part in a moment. So spending time with your chosen deity is important. It's an integral part of developing that relationship I talked about earlier. How you choose to do this is entirely up to you. I begin each day by going to my altar, I light my candles and my incense, and I make an offering. A little quiet meditation for a few moments and a prayer for the day. My evening typically ends with a prayer as well, or perhaps a tarot card spread, or um, a scouring session, um, or meditation to hear what they may want to share with me. I must tell you though, When you are answered by the God and Goddess, the answer may be subtle, or it may be profound, or damn near close to earth shaking even. Mine, I was in a trance. I was between sleeping, being awoke, and awakening hours at 4 a.m. And she came, and I was, all I can say was, ah, <laughs> that's all I can get out. Um, I just like scurried under my covers. Um, that's how it came to me. Um, each of us are different and as you build and develop your relationship with your deity they'll learn, you'll learn like how to make their answers and their wisdoms known to you um, offerings are appropriate to be to your chosen deity, it's very important it's somewhat like dangling the proverbial carrot right, you want their attention and their good graces, right you want to develop a relationship with mutual respect and common trust, right? You want to build a good relationship with them, right? Keep in mind the offerings to them should be made regularly and not simply because you are in need of their help. If you approach a ma the matter of the, with the mentality, I'm offering, this, I'm offering you this so you'll grant my wish, you will, you will have a rude awakening because they don't play that. Um, there are some um, Orishas, um, like Oshun. Oshun doesn't really trust what you do for her at first because she's just trying to check you out and see what's up. Um, you have to kind of, you know, ease into it with her. Um, instead, you know, you need to go to them. And I do it every day. Um, I honor you. I respect you. Um, I'm giving you this offering to show you how much I appreciate your intervention in my life and on my behalf. Um, the question of what to offer is simple. You know, what, like I said, researching and studying your goddess and goddess, um, you'll know what to give them and you'll know what not to give them. Um, I will say this, for the Egyptians, they loved beer. So there are sometimes, if I just got a fresh case of beer, yeah, I said a case, um, I might open up one and... I'm going to pour them some. Um, my husband loves Anubis. This is who my husband 
Anubis. And um, when he's home, he does things to honor him um, all the time. Um, like with, you know, uh, my beloved Isis, last night I gave her candles. She likes red, blue, gold, uh, black candles. I gave her an offering of that. Um, I gave her an offering of beer. I gave her an offering of uh, rose petals, um, pink rose petals. Um, I also, the Lapisse, I gave her um, a crystals. I also gave her an offering of amnesty. Um, and I posted the pictures online and they were beautiful. Um, with the, um, I also, she loves cinnamon, cinnamon incense. So I had those burning and she truly responded and it was beautiful. Uh, but that's a relationship that I built with her. Um, some deities, they like bread, milk, wine, nearly always for any deity that's appropriate, you know, especially if you found yourself on a search for difficult items, you know, to obtain um, the gods, they govern the home and hurt. I'm telling you, as you build your relationship, let them know I want to honor you. Um, I respect you. Um, I want you to make a way for me that I'm able to prosper, live in abundance where I'm able to honor you more appropriately. See how humbling that is. Yeah. Um, it's also a good idea to be humble, show your gratitude each time your deity has blessed you with granting um, granting your desires. We often, you know, stuck get stuck wondering what we might do to show them our thanks and continue a mutual prosperous relationship with them. Um, so many of us search the world over for the answer. And if there is a holy grail, you know, when in truth, the answer is quite simple. Be in service of them. In the ancient world, priesthood was called to service and coveted honor. I'm not saying that you should run out and become ordained. Quite the contrary, actually. Um, but you should be responsible for maintaining a rhythm with your deity. Um, deities only require the touch of the deity. Um, and truly, the deity will guide your way. It may be as something simple as planting flowers or shrubs in a local park, volunteering your time to feed the hungry, starting a pagan discussion or a network group. If it's a war god you worship, you may craft medals or amulets or necklaces. Um, some have found their calling to be writing to educate others and share their knowledge. Um, as well as the knowledge of a deity that serves them. They love that. Okay. Commitment. Some of y'all have commitment issues. You can't have no commitment issues with your deity. You want them to work for you. I'm just saying. <laughs> but how do we get to the point of where we discover what service of ours is to our deity? Um, you have to perform it. Sometimes it will come in the form of inspiration or a certain urge to accomplish something that you may have not have otherwise had given consideration. Like me, it may come to you in a dream or maybe like in a vision. However, it will come to you. It's important to allow yourself to be open to receive the message. Regular meditation will help you with that greatly um, by slowly, by slowing your breathing. You are slowing your heartbeat as well as your mind. Releasing all of those unwanted mental gunks we retain in allowing ourselves to clear space to receive the messages of the divine. Um, I'm really trying not to make this so long, and I'm sorry. Uh, while anyone can perform like a sacrifice or make an offering um, or rattle off a chant, you know, the true servant of a certain deity will inherit a vast body of knowledge over time. I don't want you guys to ever feel like you have to do stuff so quickly. Um, it's a lifetime. It's a journey. You'll know what deity likes you and how to call upon her. You know, she'll bestow blessings upon you, he or she. Um, the gods are the bones of the pagan body. Treat them with honor and respect, and they will turn into you and nourish you and give you all the things that you desire. Um, you can go on. 
eBay, Amazon, and get a whole bunch of stuff. Do the research. Do the research. Like, this is my anthony. I love this. This is a goddess, uh, Isis. Um, and I can tell you some of the things that she likes. She's one of the most recognized and celebrated goddesses in Egypt. Was not a simple woman. Not only was she the sister of Oris's, O-S-I-R-I-S, but she had become his lover in order to give birth to her son, Horus. She is frequently associated to being the goddess of motherhood, magic, and fertility as a result. Um, some things that she likes. She likes uh, sac sacred animals to her, snakes, cows, crocodiles. Um, her gemstone is like bloodstone. Her colors are blue and black. Her element is water. Uh, her metal is silver. Her planets is the moon, earth, and Uranus. Her zodiac sign is Virgo. Um, she loves myrrh and fig as her plants. Um, celebrations, birthday of Isis, Ashtara, and Yule. And some of her offerings, she likes milk and honey and flowers and incense and candles. That's how I want you to become about your God and Goddess. Um, I love her very much. And you will build that relationship and love yours too. I hope I helped you. I hope I gave you some pointers on building a relationship with your deity or Goddess. Blessed be to you. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. This is Magical Lady Duchess. Bye.